And good morning. A special welcome to all of our guests and our first-time visitors. Uh, we hope you enjoy your Sabbath day and your worship with us this morning. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. How great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. I invite you to stand as we pray. O oh, gracious God, we come today because you've invited us to be here. And so now I invoke your presence. Tabernacle with us in a powerful and mighty way. Commission those same angels who hung around the cross to be here in this place today. And may we, as we worship, as we praise, as we pray, may we leave this place today declaring surely we have been with Jesus. Our lives have been changed, and it has been good to have been here. I pray in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as we sing hymn number 524, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. How are you today? Is anybody here? Happy Sabbath. Well, um, I was giving church life. There was life in this church and in this hallway all week through. And we're just going to show you a little glimpse of what had happened this past week. We thank you for your support, those of you who prayed for us, those of you who financially supported us, those of you that were here, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. What you will see next is um, the processional with some children singing, and you will be watching also a video that one of our parent volunteers videotaped throughout the week. So, and when I asked him at the beginning of the week, would you take pictures? He says, well, but you know what? He worked so hard last night to get this ready. So we thank um, Gary so much. Barry, Barry, I'm sorry, Barry Lee. And uh, you can see also uh, Vacation Bible School in the um, internet. If you missed anything, he, he uploads things over there. We also need to thank um, Norberto because he has helped us with various areas in Vacation Bible School as well. Now, we started our program with song and a lot of exercises, and Patty Gomez was in charge of teaching the songs and telling some stories to the children at the beginning at the end of the program. Then, we went to different areas of the church where the leaders were teaching uh, different uh, segments of this curriculum, which is wonderful. And Marina is going to be leading out the children today on the memory verses that they learned this week. Uh, Audrey had the games. That's a popular area, but also we want the children to have fun, but also to have that spirit of worship in service. So this year, the monies that the children collected during the week will go to Haiti to buy food for the children in Haiti. And Audrey's gonna tell you more about that. And uh, before I leave and the children come in, I just like to leave this with you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. This commandment that I give you today are the, to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you go up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. And that's what the children did five or six times during the week because every station that they went, they reviewed their memory verses and they learned the lessons of the day. So thank you very much, uh, everyone, for being part of Vacation Bible School as well.
going to say some of the memory verses that we learned during the week, right? Okay, so for day number one, the Lord will hold me close. Psalm 27, 10. For day number two, the Lord church good morning kids remember me we had a great time this week I had a great time and I am so happy that you guys came to play with me now during the time that we played I promise you something okay and and just so you know during this week we had the uh, games with the children and while we were doing the games I also had one thing one task this week and I'll see if I can bring it up here just to show you really quick, we, just, just like every year, we collect money to help a special cause. Last year, we helped collect money to help with wa uh, water uh, <clears throat> in, a, in a different country, Peru, thank you. This year, we helped uh, with money to uh, help with crop, with food. Uh, in Haiti because of all the disaster that, haps, that happened in Haiti. And these are the little seed bags that the kids brought, uh, brought money and we put in those bags uh, throughout this week. And just so you let, I told you guys that I was going to let you know how much money. And uh, we, brought, we brought all together $506.36 this week. And this is all the kids. So you guys did awesome. It's $500.
And this money is going to help uh, children from Haiti that have been suffering many, many disasters, uh, natural disasters. As you can see in the picture, they live very poorly there. Now, as I promised, and I'll be very quick, I told you that I was going to bring a surprise from Haiti, remember? Now, I want to call you up here, my sister. Her name is Sumaya Lutke. Come on up here, please. Wait, you say you were going to bring something from Haiti. That's right. Guess what? I'm going to show you why this is from Haiti. Okay. Tell me what you do and your husband did for the past 20 years. Hi, everyone. My name is Maya Lutke. I'm Audrey's sister. And I have a son. He's somewhere here. His name is Kalo. You might see him in the picture as well. We've been working with Adra for 20 years around the world, and one of the places that we've been, it was in Haiti. Those are the pictures that when we work in Haiti. That was, we stayed in Haiti for two years, right after the big, 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 huge earthquake that they had it over there in 2011. Now, she lived in Haiti helping the little children. Now, how critical, and what do you think that the money that we collect now, do you, what do you think this money is going to do to help the children in Haiti? As you see in the picture, if you have a chance to look it around, Haiti is a really poor country. And a long time ago when the earthquake happened, everything collapsed. A lot of the big buildings went down and they didn't have place to stay, they didn't have place to live. So some of them were living in a tent and they didn't have good water to drink. That was Kalon, my son. He was going to school there. So they didn't have water to drink. They didn't have food to eat. They didn't have place to live, a, a good home, a house to stay. So they live in a tent. So at that time, Adra was there helping them building shelters so they can get out of the street and have a place to stay. So we stay there for a while. And the kids are really, really, really poor. They didn't have money to go to school. They didn't have money even for food, even for drinking water. Like we have a nice good water over here, but the water over there was really dirty at the time because there was no cleaning system. So Adra helped build places so they can clean the water and have good water to drink and have place to stay at the time. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to show you a couple things that my sister Sumaya brought from Haiti. And just so you guys know what they do over there, also to make money. Look, see this right here? This is an instrument. Look at the picture they make over there. Look how beautiful that is. Look at this. This is a rug. And they make this to make money. That's what they use to survive. Now, you want to see something else? Here's another instrument. There you go. And this right here, they, I forgot the other part of that. They use this for cooking. Look at that, they put, the meal, they put the food inside and they smash the food. And then the last one that I want to show you from Neil, those are some clothes that they wear in Haiti. Now, it's all different from what we normally see, and that's what I wanted to share with you. This is my special surprise from Haiti that I promise. Thank you so much for helping. Continue to help. Parents, thank you for encouraging your kids to bring money to, the, uh, to help with the project in Haiti. This, this money is going to go a long ways. It's over $500. We encourage you to find a project that can get the kids involved and get them helping. Promote that helping uh, operation Kid to Kid, which is when we can help kids from other countries as well. Thank you so much, kids. Everybody stand up. I didn't know it would be this hard. I didn't think I could fall so far. But here I am. How did I stray so far off? you
As the children leave us now, I wanted to give you an update. Uh, we have about 78 children, and the ladies in the kitchen fed about 125 to 120 people with the helpers as well. So thank you so much for supporting our little endeavor in our mission field. Thank you. As the children are exiting, you may kneel if you're able. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this day to celebrate eternal life with you. Thank you for rescuing us from our struggles and allowing us to dump all of our worries at the foot of Jesus' cross. Please provide comfort and peace to those suffering that may, they may feel your presence each day. And I pray for you to speak through Pastor Peter and guide us to do your will as a church. In Jesus' name, amen. Was, uh, good morning. Um, when I was 10 years old, um, my first summer camp at Cedar Falls, on Friday night, we walked down, took a hike to Inspiration Point where we could see the stars. And I was taught a song. I was thinking of that as the children were singing in Vacation Bible School. was taught the song that I heard for the first time, I'll be true, precious Jesus, I'll be true. And that song has stayed in my life especially in trying times or in times of, of when I needed comfort, I would go and just get the guitar and play it. And I'm gonna sing a, a medley of some traditional hymns. The first one was written by a art teacher who was born in Dundee, Michigan. He was a very talented artist and he was a teacher. And his friends had encouraged him for years to to become an evangelist because he was a great preacher. His name was Judson W. Vanden, Vanden Venter. And he finally surrendered to that idea and he wrote the hymn, I Surrender All. 
and he became a big influence on, one, on a young evangelist in the 30s, uh, Billy Graham. The second hymn was written by a, a woman named Adelaide, and she attended prayer meetings. She was a very devout Christian, and she was at a prayer meeting. She wanted to be a missionary in Africa, and she couldn't raise enough money, and she was very frustrated. And she went to prayer meeting one, one, uh, in 1902 and heard an elderly lady have a prayer that basically said, God, whatever it is that your will is, let me accept it. And she wrote the hymn, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. And uh, so I'd like to, to sing these, share these with you about commitment and about that the truth of commitment is that we surrender. We have to surrender our wills and our lives.
Amen, amen, amen. What a wonderful message in song. Just like to thank Brother Alex for that beautiful rendition. Wasn't that just splendid? Amen, amen. I'm excited today because I've had the privilege of attending VBS every single night this week. And it's been so wonderful. I tell you, those of you who were not able to attend, I want you to know you missed an incredible treat. And I felt like I was a kid at heart all over again. I remember the years when I uh, attended VBS as a child. And I tell you, this has been an incredible experience in this church has put together a wonderful and marvelous VBS program. And I know that all of our young people have been so blessed. It's been such a wonderful experience. I was reflecting on exactly what I might share with you this week and I thought, wouldn't it be fitting if I just talk a bit about the theme for our VBS this week? And so I went looking through the biblical text just looking for some story that embodies that theme, shipwrecked. And I found this story, a little known story here in the book of Samuel. And I'd like to invite all of you just to turn in your Bibles if you've got a Bible, or if you wanna read it on the screen, or if you don't have a Bible, you can turn in your phone to Samuel chapter four, Second Samuel chapter four, verse 4 and 2 Samuel chapter 4 verse 9 uh, chapter 9 pardon me verses 1 to 8 if you've got it in your Bible you can turn to it or if you've got a phone I brought my real Bible today because somebody told me this week those of you who are using the Bible on your phone are using phony Bibles I didn't want to I didn't want to do that anymore so I thought I'd bring the real Bible so nobody could throw any stones at me for using a phony Bible. Let's read together. The Bible says, And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel and his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass, as she made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. And then just flip over a couple chapters to Second Samuel chapter 9. We read, and David said, verse 1, is there, any, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul? that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul? that I may show the kindness of God unto him. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machar, the son of Amiel in Lodabar. Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machar, the son of Lemiel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, saw, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold, thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. 
And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? I want to invite you to pray with me on the subject I've entitled, Somebody Dropped You, Get Up. Just turn to your neighbor and tell him, tell him, tell him, somebody dropped you. Come on, turn to your neighbor, tell him, somebody dropped you, but you can get up. Gracious God, we are just browsers on the internet of mercy, searching for a website of your truth. Send us printouts from the pearly gates, O oh God, for we know that the network of heaven is never down, and downloads are always free. Speak to our hearts through this word. Amen. Most people live the present moment based on events from their past. But what if I can tell you that you live not based on what happened in the past. Life happens based on what happens in the future. And every human being is called to live into a divinely designed and crafted future. It is a bright future rooted in faith and not the dismal past of yesterday. Such was the case with Mephibosheth, Jonathan's son, and King Saul's grandson in this obscure Bible story. And I just need 15 minutes and I'll be through. He was born a prince. He could have been a king. But somebody dropped him. This five-year-old boy experienced the theme of our BBS, shipwreck, brokenness, and shame. In fact, his name, Mephibosheth, means mouth of shame. Because he only had this sad story to tell of a nurse who dropped him as she ran carrying him from those who sought to kill him. I can hear him tell the story in many, many different ways. I was born a prince. I could have been a king, but somebody dropped me. I was born great. I could have been grand, but somebody dropped me. I was born healthy. I could have been mighty, but somebody dropped me. I used to be bright and beautiful and blessed, and I could have been more than I am today, but instead I'm broken and battered and beaten and bruised because somebody dropped me. I was born into royalty and swaddled in the finest clothes and nursed in the palace, waited on by maids and servants, and I'm an heir to a throne, but somebody dropped me, somebody I trusted and depended on and believed in dropped me, and now I'm lame and wounded and crippled and I'm broken and poor. I'm a ghost of what I could have been, would have been, should have been, but ain't. And my dear Christian friends, herein, in this passage lies all the trouble in the Bible. Every Bible character either profiles as a perpetrator who caused somebody else's pain or weeps as a wounded victim because somebody left them shipwrecked and broken in shame. And this passage anchors the reality of Davidic conquest in the halls of human tragedy so that none could get it twisted and nobody escapes this reality. Every story in this ancient text echoes the cry of this tragedy. And it's not fair. But I guess therein lies all the trouble in the Bible, trouble that tells of human pain and brokenness and shame. But it's not just trouble in the Bible, it's trouble in the world. Everywhere you look, you see this drama being played out. 
All over the world I see scenes of human brokenness, sickness, and shame. This same trouble lurks and lunges and lingers in our world. Like the old African-American slave used to sing, Over my head I see trouble in the air. There must be a God somewhere. What kind of trouble, Pastor Peter? This same kind of trouble that we just found in the Bible, perpetrating careless caregivers who drop little five-year-old children and those same little children now wounded and broken and lame and poor and filled with shame. And so it really makes no difference where you come from, what language you speak, how old you may be, or what riches you possess. Either you suffer brokenness or you cause brokenness in this world. And sadly, nobody escapes this tragedy, this tragic drama, and all of us end up wounded, and wounded people wound other people, and hurting people hurt other people. It's an unending cycle of brokenness, pain, uh, guilt, and shame. We all suffer that past wound that left us broken and we inadvertently turn around and wound other people. Now I've come to know many in this church as optimistic and hopeful and certainly not fixated on any kind of woundedness, but I stopped by to tell you that it makes no difference who you are, somebody dropped you. You know, statistics shows that one out of three people carry some kind of hidden pain. They carry some form of internal hurt, brokenness, and woundedness because somebody dropped you. So just for a moment, let me just check. Everybody turn and look at your neighbor on your right. Everybody, everybody, just turn to the neighbor on your right. Just look at them, look at them real good. How are they looking? Do they look all right? Mm -hmm. Now, everybody go on and turn. Look at the neighbor on your left. How are they looking? Do they look like they hold? Do they look like they're all right? Well. If they're looking good, then honey, child, brother, man, sister, girl, it's not them that's wounded, it's you. Up in the house of God, worshiping, singing, praying, and praising, but deep down on the inside you carry some hidden pain from a tragic event in your past. Here lies the trouble in the Bible and this same trouble in the world. You were born a prince or a princess. You could have been a king or a queen, but somebody dropped you. You were born great. You could have been grand, but somebody dropped you. Yes, you could have been much more than you are right now. You reflect on it every day. You feel it at every level. You could have had your PhD by now. You could have had a million dollars by now. You could have accomplished so many great and wonderful and marvelous things by now, but somebody disappointed you. Somebody failed you and somebody let you down. And I stop by to tell you that God knows that not everything that happened to you is your fault. Somebody dropped you and no human being escapes this tragedy because every one of us got dropped by the progenitors of the human family, Adam and Eve. You know, they say the first computer dates back to Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. It was an apple with limited memory, just one bite in it, and then everything crashed. that now all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That virus hit every single child of God. Not y'all have sinned, all have sinned and fallen short from God's grace. And every one of us suffers from Mephibosheth's wounded lameness. We cannot walk straight and tall in the pathway of God's righteousness. Like Mephibosheth, we stand shipwrecked, broken, naked, poor, wretched, and shameful in the presence of a holy God, and nobody has peace 
unless God intervenes with grace. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't just find this trouble in the Bible, but bless your heart, saints of God, I found God's grace in the Bible for young Mephibosheth. I found it in the second part of our scripture passage in Samuel chapter 9. One day, King David went looking for somebody from Saul's family. He wanted to show kindness because of his friendship with Jonathan. And the Bible records he called Ziba his servant and asked Ziba, is there anybody left from the house of Saul, from Saul's family, so that I may show him kindness? And servant Ziba said, yeah, there's one son of Jonathan left, just one, but he's crippled. He's lame. You know, you got to watch out for folks like Ziba in the church, y'all. Every time they call your name, they're going to call your shame. Yeah, Jonathan has one son left, but he's He's crippled, but I'm so glad that didn't stop King David. David says, oh, where is he? Oh, he's in Lodibar, Lodibar. Now, 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 Lodibar had a population filled with broken, messed up folks. Nothing good ever happened in Lodibar. Lodibar had no industry, no productivity, no business enterprise, no prestigious schools, no preeminent philanthropic institutions. Lodibar was a dry, barren, fruitless, non-productive ghetto land. And Mephibosheth lived in Lodabar because he feared the king. As a child of the previous defeated King Saul, he knew that one day the king may find him and seek to kill him. And so when King David sent Ziba to Lodabar with a simple message, Mephibosheth, the king calls for you. Immediately fear and dread gripped every single nerve in anguish and terror and trepidation. He dragged his lame, wounded, broken body to the palace and stood up before the king. Uh, king David said, Mephibosheth, don't you be afraid because I want to show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan. I will restore to you King Saul's land and you will eat at my table but Mephibosheth said what does the king want with such a dead dog like me you see he thought it was all about him he stood transfixed and fixated on how he saw himself in the present moment based on what happened in his past. In verse 9, King David didn't even respond to this comment. He didn't even do it justice to dignify his statement. He just spoke to Ziba the servant and said, I've restored Mephibosheth's inheritance and he will dine with me forever. Oh, thanks be to God for this amazing grace because that's the grace in the Bible for Mephibosheth. Though under deserving and unbecoming and a, a natural enemy by birth. King David's grace called him from the ghetto of Lodibar. Oh, I've got to quit now, but I also found this same grace in the world. Yes, I found this trouble in the Bible, trouble in the world, but then I found God's grace in the Bible and God's grace in the world. For I know another king Oh, yes, I do. And though I am not Ziba, I am this king's servant. His name is Jesus. And he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And I'm so glad to declare today that when you're caught in your own shipwreck, abandoned in Lodabar, broken and beaten and battered and bruised, Jesus rescues. Amen, somebody. And he sent me here today to speak to some shipwrecked, wounded, broken, lame person living in your own sinful ghetto of Lodabar. You've been living away from your purpose, apart from your destiny, separated from your inheritance, riddled with pain and filled with shame in Lodabar. Lodabar, that place where everybody lives messed up lives, lives reversed values, confused ideologies, this old world and the life of sin, Lodabar, where temples are free to enter but still empty in Lodabar. Lodabar, where pubs and bars charge to enter but they're always free. Lodabar, where people ignore inner peace and choose to pay for a life of self-destruction. Lodabar, but even worse, in Lodabar, you've been living in fear of the king. 
And God sent me this morning with this simple message. I know somebody dropped you, but you, you can get up because the king calls you. And that's all I came to say to you this day, regardless of how broken and wounded and hurt you may feel. Get up and drag your wounded, broken, hurting self to the king's table. Regardless of where you came from and whatever happened to you, get up and gather up your crippled feet and move to the king's table. Regardless of how low you've fallen, move to the king's table. Regardless of how poor you feel, go on and just move to the king's table. Regardless of your age, your education, or your sophistication, you may move to the king's table. You may be in your tender teens or uh, going through your teachable twenties or uh, going through your tireless thirties or in your fearful 40s or your fitful 50s or your seasoned 60s or your settled 70s or your aching 80s or your nebulent 90s or your hesitant hundreds. But it makes no difference. There's room for you at the king's table. Your past doesn't determine your destiny. When King Jesus calls you in the sentence of this life, the devil may be a comma in your life, but never let him be a period. For Christ Jesus speaks beyond your loaded bar. King Jesus speaks not of your past, but he speaks of your future. He says, I will restore your inheritance. I will return your wealth to you, and you will eat at my table and dwell in my house forever. I just heard somebody say in the words of Mephibosheth, what does the king want with such a dead dog as me? But it's not about you and your past. We always think it's about us. I stop by to tell somebody, it's not about you. It's about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and a deal he struck with God, his heavenly father. He promises a bright and glorious future, not based on your goodness. Oh, this is the gospel that based solely on the merits of Jesus Christ, our Lord. You can get up and move to the King's table, responding to the King's call through faith and prayer and love and so a surrendered life anybody here who wants to move to the king's table can get up and my dear Christian friends I promise you you'll get joy at the king's table you'll get peace at the king's table you'll get mercy and forgiveness at the king's table you'll find healing at the king's table you'll get goodness and blessings at the king's table. You'll get a brand new life and new hope and a new future at the king's table. Oh, is there anybody here who loves my Jesus? He calls you today. He's calling you right now in this moment to move and live your entire life in his presence according to his will. Somebody here just wants to respond to that call right now, won't you just raise your hand where you are? I want to pray for you all over the building. You want to respond to the call of the king, to the move to the king's table, won't you just raise your hand? Now go on and bow your heads with me. Let us pray. Gracious God, I thank you. I thank you that though we've been dropped, enduring the brokenness of sin, wounded in our feet, unable to walk in the pathway of righteousness, wounded in our hands, unable to do the works of justice, wounded in our eyes, unable to see the truth of your goodness. Lord, I thank you today that you've come through your peace, through your grace, through your spirit's power. You've come, oh God, to open blind eyes, to quicken our hands, and to strengthen our feet. And you've called us to the king's table where we can find renewal, revival, restoration, and rejuvenation. Oh Lord, today as a community of faith, you've called us to get up and move to the king's table. And so I thank you for this congregation that chooses to respond. I pray for each one here today, each heart, each man, woman, boy or girl, Seal this decision they've made right now. Seal it for eternity. 
In the name of Jesus, amen. Our offering today is for the church budget. And for those of you who have been blessed by our vacation Bible school, amen somebody, I want you to know that the vacation Bible school was free, amen, but the lights cost money. <laughs> and so as our deacons wait on us for the Lord's tithes and our free will offerings, I invite you to just dig deep in your pockets and give to support our vacation Bible school. I want you to know a donor has promised to give $500. How much? $500 to match our offering today. I think that means if we give, I'm not sure how it works, but what's that? For the what? Oh, for the Haiti, to, for the Haiti operation today, okay? And so um, we invite you to dig deep in your pockets and give as the Lord has blessed you today. Amen. Father God, bless these funds we've received to the furtherance of your work and the spreading of the gospel. I pray in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. I'd like to invite the congregation to stand as we sing our closing hymn number 285, Jesus Calls Us.
want to remind us that we have an invitation from the pastor to meet with all the parents of small children, uh, large, I mean, adult, <laughs> all the parents of adult children today in the chapel immediately after church for prayer. We want to pray for the adult children of our church. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our gracious God, we pray that you now, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, would bless us and keep us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord shine his light and love upon you and give you peace in your rising up and in your setting down, in your going out and in your coming in, in your laughter and in your sorrow, in your labor and in your leisure, until you come to the place where there's no more sunset and no dawning. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be seated. Thank you. 